At the moment, he is heading a logistics firm here in Bukhara, and he's got a lot of experience and awesome stories he wants to, you know, share today on the podcast. So, without further ado, meet Mr. Asalbek Abdullayev. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, wa alaikum as salam. Thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Me and my friend started it uh, two years ago, and now it has grown to more, more than 120 trucks. Mm -hmm. Right. It's pretty good. Right. Yeah. And now we have uh, m more than 50 employees. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was just me and my friend. Mm -hmm. Now we have more than 50. So if it's not a secret, what was your like starting pay? Okay. How, how, mu time? how much were you offered starting out? Some companies have to work 12 hours mm -hmm. and others, you just have to work nine hours. Mm -hmm. But our company, you know, we grinded very hard mm -hmm. and we were required the best and we were required to, you know, dispatch trucks 24-7. Mm -hmm. It really affects their, you know, health, mm -hmm. their eating mm -hmm. and their, you know, they will start having headaches, mm -hmm. you know. But I think uh, all of this disappears when you get your salary. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Speaking of pay, if that's not a secret. What's the most amount of money you made in a single month? You can't believe it. Actually, in one of his videos, he meets a lady who was my former colleague. Damn. Yeah, it, it just happened in two different years. Okay, I, Is I, it one I, of those videos he gave, you know, um, gives, gives away a lot of money? $10,000 to, to a windy worker. I used to work at that exact Wendy's. Damn. Auto banks. I just couldn't believe when I saw that lady. I was like, she used to be my colleague. We used to work together. Because yeah. sometimes I mess with my students. I tell, I tell them, we talk about our favorite animals, and I tell them my favorite one is a unicorn, and my favorite color is pink. <laughs> and then and they say, teacher, we dare you to wear a pink uh, T-shirt with unicorn print on it and come to work tomorrow. And in, in, in religion, you have uh, get a lot of your questions answered whatever questions you have about life, about situations, there are answers in mm -hmm. your religion. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to learn it. I'm trying to, you know, dig into it a little, little deeper, a little mm -hmm. more. If, if you guys are out there looking for the right partner who's handsome, great for looking, sure. uh, with a ton of cash, hit him up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not sure if you're talking about me, though. Okay, so uh, what do you look for in your future partner? People who are in search of themselves or trying to find out uh, what they should do in life, just try hard. Find something you are good at, find something or find something you actually like and get good at it. If you're not good at something, if you're not best at something, there's no point in doing at all. So if you're doing something, mm -hmm. be the best or don't do at all. Hey folks, hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Industrial Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali here. Uh, okay, before I introduce the guest today, I want to ask you guys to go and subscribe to this channel. This is a nonprofit channel and we have no source of income and that would help us a lot greatly if you went ahead and subscribed to our channel. And please don't forget to hit that notification bell so every time we release a new podcast or put out a video, you guys get an instant notification on your phone or your device, your laptop. All right, well, without further ado, now let me introduce to you the man I'm gonna be talking to today. It's actually an old friend. So we've known each other for over a decade now and we went to the same university, we majored in the same faculty, and we had we spent so much time together, you know, growing up. And at the moment, he's heading a logistics firm here in Bukhara, and he's got a lot of experience and awesome stories he wants to, you know, share today on the podcast. So without further ado, meet Mr. Asalbek Abdullayev. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, wa alaikum as salam. Thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. <laughs> Very good to be here. Yeah, this podcast is long over overdue. We yes. should have had this podcast a long time ago. Um, yeah, we're, and we're finally making it I'm happen. Here. So would you, would you like to tell our audience a little about yourself, about what you do? <clears throat> okay, I'm, uh, my name is Asalbek Abdullayev. I'm 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm a Westminster graduate, mm -hmm. just like you are. I mm -hmm. uh, have been working for three years now in the mm -hmm. logistics fair. 
And now, as you mentioned, I am a dispatch manager in a logistics firm, uh, a new one. Mm -hmm. And I have been working here for two years now. Mm -hmm. First, I started in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. And after this, uh, after a year, I moved here. Mm -hmm. So I'm working here now. So what's that firm called again? Uh, the company? Uh, yeah. Delo Trans. It's called Delo Trans. Right, right. It's like a startup company, right? It's, uh, it's not a startup. It's a logistics company. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, me and my friend, uh, I can say me and, me and my friend started it uh, two years ago. And now it has grown to more, more than 120 trucks. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Right. It's pretty good. Right. Yeah. And now we have uh, m more than 50 employees. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was just me and my friend. Mm -hmm. Now we have more than 50. Wow. Yeah. So you took the company from only you and your friend to a big company of 50 employees. Not only me and my friend, but mm -hmm. you can say this. Uh, me, my friend, the manager, the mm -hmm. accounting manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started, I was just a dispatcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, after six months, mm -hmm. they promoted me to dispatch manager. Mm -hmm. And after this, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we grew very exponentially. It was very good. All right. So uh, what do you say we take a step back here and talk a little about how you got into this industry? Mm -hmm. So uh, what prompted you into this profession? Like, why did you decide to become a dispatcher? So that, that's the official job title yes, in dispatcher. your line of business, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Dispatcher. So why did you decide to become a dispatcher? <sighs> okay. Um, when we were mm -hmm. studying, I was, uh, I really, actually I didn't know what I'm going to do after mm -hmm. graduation. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about my, maybe opening my own school. Mm -hmm. I was a tutor myself, mm -hmm. but I never kind of really liked uh, teaching mm -hmm. uh, because I think I don't have the patience that you do. Uh -huh. And, uh, and 20, I think 2021, 2020, mm -hmm. uh, this job became very popular mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. our mutual friends, mm -hmm. uh, started working at this job. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only reason I got engaged in this job was money. Yeah. Yeah. Just money. So if it's not a secret, what was your like starting pay? Okay. How, how, much, how, how much were you offered starting out? Uh, it's not about offering. It's about how you work, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You get the percentage mm -hmm. from the loads you book. Mm -hmm. And uh, starting, I, my mm -hmm. percentage was 0.5%. Mm -hmm. So my first salary, I guess it was like 700 bucks. Wow. First salary, yeah, uh -huh. 700 bucks. And you're making that much working seven, eight hours a day, right? No. Uh, at, the, at the time, we were working 12 hours a day mm -hmm. from 5 p.m. to mm -hmm. 5 a.m. In the morning. Yeah, and and for the record, that's a nighttime job, right? Night shift. Uh, so we uh, we work standard standard U.S. time, mm -hmm. and uh, there are four time zones in the U.S. and the uh, 8 a.m. 9 to 5 job, as they call the 9 to 5 job, mm -hmm. uh, it's from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. in our country. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a standard daytime job in the U.S., but mm -hmm. in, in uh, Uzbekistan, it's a nighttime job. Yes. So you have to sacrifice your sleep. Mm -hmm. You have to sacrifice a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, to and earn. And it's not even guaranteed that you're going to earn anything. Yeah. Uh, it's, it really comes to your skills. Mm -hmm. And like, how did it feel the first, you know, time working this job, the first month of your, you know, employment? How'd you, how'd you feel first month? Like having Very good. To, having to stay up late at night. And was there like a period of adaptation that felt where you felt like quitting sometimes. Yeah, I was living with you, if you remember. I was yeah. fourth uh, grade, the final year, uh -huh. and uh, I was thinking about doing something good with my time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was about to, you know, start even or trading mm -hmm. or just this job. Mm -hmm. And trading, I didn't think it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started this job. It was quite fun because I started with my friends. I am a very competitive guy. And okay. we started to when oh, we started I, together. I, I can confirm that guy. He's as yeah. competitive as they come. Yeah. Okay. He he loves com competing with people. He love he loves competing with uh, pretty much everyone. We used to actually compete at university, trying to see who would get the highest score on the yes. math exam, on the English exam. And I'm no match 
to this guy because we'll, um, you know, come on, his math is amazing. This guy went to one of the renowned schools in Uzbekistan, Karakul, and yes. we'll, we'll get to that part later, okay? Yeah. We'll talk about your upbringing and your high school experience in a bit, right? But anyway, uh, this guy is crazy competitive, right? When I got, That's, uh, when I got <laughs> this job, I was uh, thinking, uh, I thought it was a little late because uh -huh. uh, at the time a lot of my friends have had been working for over a year. Mm -hmm. And I was very, uh, very lucky because when I got this job, when I started this job, the market, the overall market and trucking, mm -hmm. uh, it was very good. Mm -hmm. It is 2021 is considered to be one of the best years in the history of trucking. Mm -hmm. So back then everyone was making money. That was a right lot of money. Yeah. That was right after COVID, right? Yes, right after COVID. Uh -huh. Right after COVID, everyone uh, was making a lot of money, including mm -hmm. the business owners, mm -hmm. and drivers themselves, and mm -hmm. of course, dispatchers. And uh, yeah, I started uh, with my friend mm -hmm. and uh, was very competitive. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, we used to compare our salaries because uh -huh. I started six months later than him. Uh -huh. But, you know, I was uh, making more than him after like four months or five months, something like that. <laughs> yeah, you caught up fast. Yeah, we caught up fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, I see. And uh, could, could, would you like to tell us a little about what your job entails? Like, is it like sitting at your desk all day long and taking calls, making yes. arrangements, right? and hooking up your truck drivers with potential clients like so uh, what are the tricks of your trade pretty much pretty much uh, dialing uh, all day mm -hmm. so uh, there is a company and you said there are there are trucks and one dispatcher gets assigned about seven or eight trucks mm -hmm. uh, depending on his skills mm -hmm. uh, minimum i would say four to eight trucks and you have to find loads for this truck every day for those trucks actually Mm -hmm. And uh, you call the brokers mm -hmm. and uh, get a load. Try to find the best loads for your drivers mm -hmm. at very good, uh, very very good rates. Mm -hmm. And uh, from every load that you book, you get percentage. So. Like commission. How much? So you said your commission is five percent, right? No, zero point five percent. Zero point five percent. And I'm guessing the rate for each load is a lot of money. A lot of right. money. Yeah. At the time, it was a lot of money. So, yes. do you want to give us like the ballpark? Uh, amount for per each mile, load. We were booking at least three dollars mm -hmm. at the time per mile. Mm -hmm. For every mile they drive, mm -hmm. let's say from let's say from Chicago to Newark, it's mm -hmm. about seven hundred fifty miles. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this kind of job, we were taking like three grand, thirty five hundred. Mm -hmm. It really depends from where to where uh, the destinations that you're going mm -hmm. from and to. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the overall market was very good, so mm -hmm. we were booking a very good loads and mm -hmm. hence our salary was very good as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I mean, that kind of explains why everyone is so obsessed with this job. So many people want to get into this job because the pay is great. Pay is pay, great. Yeah. Pay is fantastic. Like you can be making uh, average annual amount of, um, I don't know, like 50, 60, $70,000 a year just doing this job here in Uzbekistan, <laughs> which is more than how much an Ameri average American makes in the U.S., right? Yes, yes. That's, that's a ton of money, right? Yes. But what, what, what are the trade-offs? Like, what do you have to give up to get that money? So the interesting thing, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I started this job in 2021 in January. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, for, the best part of the, for the best part of the winter, I didn't see sun. Mm-hmm. After three months, when it was, uh, you know, uh, when I was going to my university uh -huh. for some assignment, uh -huh. I actually saw light and I was very surprised, you know. And I, I, had, uh, I came to the realization that, you know, I hadn't seen sun in three, uh, three months. Wow. It was very fun. Wow. And, uh, it, was yeah. like, it was like being let out of prison. It was like being let out of jail, yes. I guess. <laughs> you uh, sacrifice uh, a lot of things. Sacrifice your uh, the things that you usually do mm -hmm. during the day, mm -hmm. uh, like time with family. Your time with family, time with friends, uh -huh. anything else. You pretty much sleep all day, mm -hmm. and after you will go to uh, work, and mm -hmm. after that, twelve hours straight work, mm -hmm. and uh, then sleep. That's it. 
And it only pays off one day a month when you're mm. getting your salary. And uh, mm. of course, there are a lot of uh, companies mm. that offer uh, mm. different kinds of uh, jobs. For example, in some companies, you have to work 12 hours. Mm. And others, you just have to work nine hours. Mm. But our company, you know, we grinded very hard. Mm. And we were required the best. And we were required to, you know, dispatch trucks 24-7. Mm. Mm -hmm. wow. and it was very hard that's why we got very good experience mm -hmm. now it's helping us mm -hmm. <clears throat> in our current jobs yeah if i wanted to make a career switch from teaching to your line of business your profession and if i wanted to become a truck dispatcher mm -hmm. right so how would you how how would i get trained oh, For you, it's oh, too late buddy oh, okay so Assuming like I can get a job, I, I stand a chance of getting this job, right? So what would be some other requirements mm -hmm. in it for landing this job and how I would, how you would go about training me? Because I know a lot of people watching this podcast probably mm -hmm. considering this job as a possible, you know, pos possible future career, right? They might yeah. want to go into this job profession. So uh, what are some things they should have in mind going to this job? Yeah, I have been asked these questions a lot of times as mm -hmm. well, and I have bad news for you guys. <laughs> On your own, it's pretty much impossible uh -huh. to get into this job right now. Uh -huh. You have to be at the right place at the right time. And if the, your experience is zero, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that your English is very good doesn't help you mm -hmm. uh, at all. So, I mean, the best, best thing is to, you know, to learn something. And uh, by learning something, I mean going to the courses, Mm -hmm. uh, which are offered now in uh, Bukhara as well. And uh, wait for your opportunity. Like courses on what? What do they uh, teach you on those courses? Dispatching. Th there are dispatch courses now. Yes. Wow. Yes. This business, this industry has grown so big to the point that now they're started tutoring, educating people. And there is no wow. guarantee that you will be hired at oh. all. Uh -huh. You will learn the very good mm -hmm. uh, uh, foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, fundamentals of you know of your job mm -hmm. and that's it yeah. and there is no guarantee that you will be hired and mm -hmm. uh, f to get hired you need to know someone that knows someone <laughs> that knows yeah. the uh, you know the, the manager yeah you just gotta pull some strings yes. right to get this job yes. I see. but uh, when it comes to the job when it comes to hiring uh -huh. i only make decisions mm -hmm. uh from the perspective of the company if mm -hmm. the person is good and we need someone mm -hmm. for example let's say uh a person left our company and we need replacement, right? Mm -hmm. And then this this case, I will start looking and I will start interviewing the candidates, the candidates, and mm -hmm. we'll, I will see. So how do I get, at least how do I get on that wait list? So I need to have someone inside to um, put a word, put in a word for me? <laughs> like no, it's some connections? Just, uh, having someone inside is not useful. Mm -hmm. Having someone inside, the max that you can get uh, from it just an, an interview mm -hmm. and, and if, if you yourself is not skillful if you yourself mm -hmm. yourself is not you know very hard working mm -hmm. very ambitious mm -hmm. uh, with big ambitions it's, it's, it's not gonna work yeah it's not gonna work uh, you know dispatching is not for, uh, for people who are very calm uh, I would say dispatching uh, is for people who, is, who are you know very energetic mm -hmm very like sort of dynamic yeah dynamic yeah. dynamic and i would say rude <laughs> a little bit places. yeah yeah Hot rush because you have to you know grab your uh -huh. load from others wow you mean you mean like it's sort of competition yeah it's who, very, who gets yeah, it first it's competitive job but starting mm -hmm. uh you, you you will not be a dispatcher uh mm -hmm. you will be an updater mm -hmm. updater means you know um giving updates to the brokers about the load mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's a fixed paid it's 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 a fixed rate job and after having worked 6 months as an mm -hmm. updater you have a chance to become a dispatcher so. yeah so how much do you get paid as an updater <clears throat> it it depends from i think from 500 to 1000 from $500 to $2000 to 1000 to to 1000 yeah Five. Uh, in our company we mm -hmm. also pay percentage from the gross but mm -hmm. in other companies i think it's fixed rate mm -hmm. but we always pay a uh, percentage from the gross uh and the reason why we do it is just we want our employees to have motivation mm -hmm. 
Because if the company makes mm -hmm. uh, money, you will make money. Mm -hmm. The company doesn't, you don't. Wow. That's how it works. Yeah. I feel like you guys make all the money. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, having second, right I'm, I'm having second thoughts about teaching guys, okay? Uh, count me out, okay? I'm going working for this guy. I'm going to go and work for this guy. No, you guys, I'm not getting hired. <laughs> you, nah, I mean... I, I can do your promo, guys. <laughs> nah. I think you're too old for this. Uh, you guys hear what he said? He, he thinks I'm too old. Yeah, yeah. because I, 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 as a manager, I want some yeah. people who are... Mm -hmm. I would say under 20, uh -huh. who I, whom I can like, you know, come around, mm -hmm. tell what to do, mm -hmm. and uh, whom you're, you know, feel comfortable uh, working. Yeah. And uh, when I say this, I mean, hey, do this, do this, do this. You want to be and able if to... the person is 25 or 26 years old or mm -hmm. older than you, I don't feel comfortable. I'm very good at taking orders, buddy. Trust me. <laughs> I'm very good at taking orders. I don't mind people. I don't mind people bossing me around. Okay. So if they say go and get me coffee, I'll get them coffee. If they say go and get me donuts, coffee, I'll get them donuts. Just pay me my bucks. That's it. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. It's a, it's a good. I thinking. have that it's mindset. I have that thinking. mentality. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Many people don't think that way. Many yeah. people think, nah, I'm just I'm that's too good to, mm -hmm. you know, as you mentioned, you know, to bring someone a coffee. Mm -hmm. No, bro. You're not too good. I mean, you're, yeah. you, have to do, uh, you have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You have to do anything to get, mm -hmm. you, get yourself promoted, yeah. to learn something. Yeah. You have to be open-minded and not you know, mm -hmm. egoistic and with big ego. Mm -hmm. If you're this guy, and you're not going yeah. uh, to go to anywhere. And arrogant and thinks that they're an important person. Important yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, not you that important. Be, yeah. Yeah, you, if, you, if you have this mentality, uh -huh. this job is not for you. <clears throat> right. I see. So, I, I mean, we can yeah. talk a lot about my job, but, you know, it's, it's really not that interesting. Listen, your job is fascinating. A lot of people are curious about what nighttime job is like, right? One of the questions I have is like, uh, what are some real downsides to having this job? Are you, have you experienced any serious, like, health problems as a result of doing this yes. job? Yes, yes. You know, family issues, right? Losing connection with your friends since you don't get to hang out with them as much anymore. So, what's really at stake? Like, what are you giving up? To it's all those problems that you mentioned. It's all the all of them. Uh, it's very, very I would say difficult mm -hmm. for people who are married, mm -hmm. for people who are married and have you know uh, mm -hmm. sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. They don't get to see their sons and daughters that much. And do you have any people working with you? Yes, with I do. Family? Yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends uh -huh. with the families, they are very, it's actually, you know, it's, I don't think that I will be working. That's what I thought. I don't, uh, I don't think I will be working at this job when I have, you know, a son or a daughter or mm -hmm. when I have a family. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you can see, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And I think I will be here for more than like three, four years. Mm -hmm. Everybody says this when they uh, start this job. They will. They say, "Hey, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make this much money, and I'm gonna leave because mm -hmm. working at this job, you know, uh, affects badly yeah. your health. It's not sustainable, right? Yeah, and uh, you don't. You don't get to see your relatives. You don't get to see your friends or anyone else. Mm -hmm. You just you and your job. Of course, you will have friends uh, in your job uh, who have you know who works the same hours, mm -hmm. but your other friends." You have to, you know, uh, mm. let go of them, right? Yeah, cut them off. Yeah, and they may think that you know you're cu you're cutting them off, mm -hmm. but in reality, you just have to do that. Mm -hmm. Have to do it, otherwise you cannot work. And mm -hmm. your health, uh, you work mm -hmm. uh, during night when you're supposed to sleep, mm -hmm. and you sleep during day when you're supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, be awake. And I think. If I'm, talk, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a medicine expert, but uh, from my perspective, mm -hmm. I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. I don't see any difference working uh, mm -hmm. during night and mm -hmm. sleeping during day. Mm -hmm. But some people say it's bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It Maybe the case might not be the case. Yeah, it sort of messes up with your circadian rhythm, right? Your body clock. Or does it adjust over time? Uh, In your case, it, apparently it did. In your case, you it doesn't matter. Yeah, it makes no difference makes what no time difference. you're sleeping. Maybe because I'm mm -hmm. still young, mm -hmm. um, but some people say um, mm -hmm. it really affects their, you know, health, mm -hmm. their eating, mm -hmm. and their, you know, 
they will start having headaches, mm -hmm. you know. But I think uh, all of this disappears when you get your salary. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of pay, if that's not a secret, what's the most amount of money you made in a single month? Uh, you don't have to disclose it if you're not comfortable doing that, right? Or what, what's the most amount of money is someone can hope to make once they get this job? Like the, what's the, like the top tier salary and what's the low, you t we talked about low tier, right? What's the top tier? Yeah, who's making the big bucks? Top it, tier, Yeah, uh, there is no actually, there is no limit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You mean you can make a million dollars doing this job? A million dollars, but uh, you know. But you said there is no upper Let limit. me say this. Uh, the best part about this job, this job doesn't require you to have any degree. Uh -huh. Right, you just have to be passionate mm -hmm. and know English, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who are under twenty and making three, four grand a month. Three, four grand a yeah, month. Yeah, and they are only eighteen, <laughs> nineteen years old. Uh -huh. And this is the best part. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it, it it really gives the opportunity to a lot of people, uh, to a lot of young people to, <clears throat> you know, to. Um, like, fulfill their potential. For example, if you wanna, uh, if you if you're studying, and if you studying and you wanna do a job that pays very really good, or mm -hmm. you have a business plan, and you need a, a startup money, you you can you know uh, work this job, uh, earn your money, and do your thing. And uh, uh, the, the case that I have uh, that I have had recently, most recently, I had a cousin. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had a cousin. He uh, he just graduated school and that's it. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to university. Uh, the only thing that I told him to learn English, and uh, he learned English and he learned it in a way which is not that good. Mm -hmm. Just you know, I would say pre intermediate or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I hired him mm -hmm. and. Uh, I hired him after four months. He was making like 900, 900 bucks. <laughs> and uh, it's really interesting because you see those people who are uh, spending six, seven years of their lives uh, going to universities mm -hmm. and uh, studying subjects. Mm -hmm. I think they don't study. They pay to study. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I really hate it. And uh, uh, and at this, at this, at this hand, we have our cousin who is making nine hundred nine hundred bucks, only mm -hmm. knowing English. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I compare his salary to my mom's salary, my mm -hmm. uh, by the way, my, my mom is a teacher uh, in a university, and she has been teaching for like twenty six years now, mm -hmm. and her salary is only seven million. Yeah, seven million. Yeah. Can you imagine? It's really crazy because, you know, on one hand, I have my mom who has been teaching for 27 years, mm -hmm. 27 years. And this uh, other hand, I have my cousin who is uh, just... Uh, no school diploma, no university nothing. diploma. Nothing, just learn English. Yeah. Just learn English. And, and basic and level English. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And he works nine hours <laughs> and he has 900 bucks. Yeah, and his pocket. Almost 1.5 times more than my mother uh -huh. it's really crazy yeah and that's just his beginning salary in a and it's of, a beginning salary yeah. yeah a couple of months a couple of years time right he's gonna be making 10 times as much probably yeah a couple of in a couple of months i would say in a couple of months in he's couple gonna of months. making i mean in a couple of months more. he can be making much more than uh, than yeah. right now yeah. but the amount of yeah. uh, educational background or mm -hmm. any background mm -hmm. required to do this job yeah. is on on the lowest mm -hmm. And uh, when you compare this job to, mm. to other jobs, mm. it's really crazy, yeah. So would you recommend to all these young people out there to drop their studies, to drop out of college, university, and start looking for uh, jobs like yours? Nah. With like qu quick payoff? And like how, how lucky do you have to be to be able to land a job like that? I guess it's like a one, in, one in a million, right? Nah, actually not. Nah. Uh, you just have to be passionate, as, mm. I, as I said, as I mentioned, and you have to be open-minded. And when you learn, you mm. have to learn, mm -hmm. like, really good. Mm -hmm. If you learn when you're taught, mm -hmm. because we train our employees, we train our guys, and mm -hmm. some of them learn and some of them, some of them don't. And uh, when they learn and when they, you know, uh, listen, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, uh, they practice. And if they, it, it really, it, it all depends on you. If you, you know, a good learner, mm-hmm. and if you're good and if you can listen, and if you can practice mm-hmm. all of what you, uh, what you were taught, uh, you can, you can make, uh, you can mm-hmm. make good money. Yeah. I actually have a question uh, that's been bothering me. Like, if this job pays so well, why do these American companies outsource, you know, from Uzbekistan or countries like India? Is that because of cheap labor? Can they just yes, set it, it is up? Yes, it's cheap. We it's only get half cheap. or 40% of what they have to pay if they didn't outsource this. Outsource this. So that, that means someone working in the U.S. is in the truck dispatch, an American citizen would be making twice as much as yes, you're making right now. at least. Oh, uh, yeah, that explains it. So th- does that mean there are going to be more trucking companies uh, eventually, you know, here in Uzbekistan, uh, Bukhara, Tashkent? Yes, so, d- I d- think d- so, because if I compare uh, the situation that we have in trucking right now mm-hmm. to the situation we had two years ago, mm-hmm. uh, it's really crazy how it grows. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, grew, it grew very exponentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, three years ago, only a few people knew what logistics was, what a dispatcher was. Mm-hmm. If now, if you ask anyone, mm-hmm. if you ask anyone, they mm-hmm. have their, their friend or relative or someone from... Their you know uh, group of friends or mm. someone from their relatives works actually mm. works in logistics, and uh, nowadays it's really really hard to get in this job because everybody wants to get in. Yeah, everybody wants to get in, and yeah. uh, everybody doesn't have any experience. Right, that's why it's re- really difficult. Yeah. But the ones who started two three years ago and uh, who got to a level where they know their job. Well, they're, uh, they have good expertise and they're good dispatchers. They are, you know, very rare, very rare. And mm-hmm. in, in our job, they, they are considered as gold. Mm-hmm. And we actually, uh, we actually uh, offer a lot of money, signing bonus for those dispatchers. Mm-hmm. Because uh, in, this, in this line of business, it's really a dispatcher who, you know, runs your company, who makes you money. If your dispatcher is good, you make money. If your dispatcher is, is not good, you go broke. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's how it works. There mm-hmm. are, uh, of course, there, there, there are other, um, there are, there are other jobs other than dispatchers. For example, we have like safety team, accounting team, uh, and other teams. But the one that pays is dispatcher. And the, the, mm-hmm. the dispatcher has, all the responsibility. Mm-hmm. If the truck is not making good money, it's because mm-hmm. because of the dispatcher, yeah. and it's really really stressful. Mm-hmm. You have to work with people who are from different countries. I have worked with Afghanis. I have worked with Tur- Turkish people. I have worked with I have worked with people from Georgia, Russian, Ukrainian, uh, from Europe, from Africa, from Arab countries. You name it. You name it. I have worked uh, with them all, and the, the, those people are illiterate. Most, like uh, in most cases, those are illiterate people. You mean like don't have school education? No, just Never they, they somehow they want uh, mm-hmm. they, they want a green card and mm-hmm. went to U.S. and mm-hmm. somehow they got their CDL, mm-hmm. CDL means commercial driving license. Somehow mm-hmm. they got their CDL and that now in their they are in the truck. Mm-hmm. And, and and now they think they are center of the world, mm-hmm. which they are not. And uh, you know they act like they act very very selfish. Yeah. Yeah. And arrogant, as if they hit arrogant. The, yeah, I'm your boss. They, do this, do that, do that. <laughs> why I'm not making this? Uh-huh. Why this this guy is making more than me? Uh-huh. They are never grateful, mm-hmm. and uh, they are always uh, asking more. Mm-hmm. Maybe it has to do with the taxing, demanding nature of their job as well. Like imagine driving the entire day, right? And you just have to sit and drive all day long, sometimes at night, sometimes in cold climate. You should yeah. take into consideration that driving here and driving in the U.S. Mm-hmm. is, very, uh, is uh, different. So how does being a truck driver in the U.S. different from being a truck driver here in Uzbekistan? Being a truck driver in the U.S. is very, really easy. Mm-hmm. I would say in terms of road conditions, first mm-hmm. of all. And most of the trucks have, you know, autopilots. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. When I uh, first heard that, I was really, uh, I was the, I was shocked as well. Same reaction. Autopilot. Right? Yeah. 
it, although are they, are those Tesla trucks or not not really different? actually not not Tesla trucks, but they have autopilot. Mm -hmm. They have this uh, they have this option of you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, keeping keeping the truck mm -hmm. in the same lane, mm -hmm. so you just have to you know, uh, mm -hmm. cruise controls. Mm -hmm. You don't have to you know uh, push gas mm -hmm. or brakes. Mm -hmm. You just you know put your hands on the steering wheel and that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. The truck will drive itself. Mm -hmm. And you but just is, but is autopilot the same thing as cruise control? Or are they? I think they are different. No, autopilots is different. Not yeah. all the trucks have autopilots. Yeah. Most are. Just new ones, mm -hmm. but a lot of them have mm -hmm. cruise control. So mm -hmm. it's just they 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 buy a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and they put their music on from their uh, mm -hmm. their national music mm -hmm. uh, and listen to it and just you know drive. It's really uh, really easy. Yeah. <clears throat> but especially uh, if you have a good load, you know. <laughs> yeah, and what is a good load? So good load means the uh, load which pays good. Oh yeah, you know, in uh, logistics and or in trucking industry, we have downturns mm -hmm. and upturns, mm -hmm. uh, just like in any other business. Mm -hmm. 2021 was the best uh, year, but uh, the years after that, they were not that good. You know, mm -hmm. they were bad actually. Uh -huh. Last year, I think like 20 or 30 percent of logistics companies went broke, went wow. bankrupt mm -hmm. because of the market. Bank market uh -huh. was very bad. Mm -hmm. And they, they couldn't cope with the stresses mm -hmm. and they couldn't pay their uh, bills. That's why they went broke. Uh, why do you think this is all happening? Is that because of the current uh, political administration, presidential administration? Or yeah. is that because the automation is coming? Everything has a part in it. Yeah. For example, when the war in Ukraine started, mm -hmm. the gas prices went really high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They went through the roof. Yeah, I, I remember it was like... Six dollars, seven dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. uh, for you to have an idea, it, it, it is it, it is around one point five or two dollars per gallon mm -hmm. during normal times. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember it was like seven dollars per yeah. gallon in California. In California, it's the highest. It's like four x. Yeah. Yeah. The four x. It, it literally four x. Yes. All right. It was crazy. So, yeah. uh, gas prices went up. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, truck drivers. A lot, a lot of truck drivers couldn't uh, couldn't take. Uh, they were working, but mm -hmm. they were not making anything. Mm -hmm. They were just imagine working seven days, and mm -hmm. after seven days, it turns out you still owe money. You owe money to the company instead mm -hmm. of making money. You're owing. You're working to the negative. Mm -hmm. That's why they all, uh, not all, but most most mm -hmm. of them sold their trucks. Most of the companies went bankrupt, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but from the other hand, it was a good time or, or good opportunity for other companies to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you talk about my company, we, grow, we grew in the time when market was really bad. I think we you know, grabbed that opportunity and um, make it work to our advantage. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, we were one of those companies who, had, who were lucky enough you know, to, I don't know, if it was luck, if it were anything mm -hmm. else, but we grew very good. Mm -hmm. In one year, we were over 100 trucks. So, 100 trucks? 100 trucks, yeah. You guys are in charge. You are in charge of 100 trucks now, right? Yes. So how does, how does it feel be heading a logistics firm? Now, I'm guessing you got promoted to managerial position, right? Yes. Now you run the com company, practically. Yeah. Not entirely, but yeah. you are one of the big guys there. I'm responsible. I'm the one who is responsible for the sales, uh -huh. for the money. Right. So, how does it feel, calling the shots um, and being the big guy? Right. When I was promoted uh -huh. first, I was a little afraid because uh -huh. I didn't have any experience, uh -huh. and you don't have the manual of how to manage the company. You cannot read in the book. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to learn as it goes uh -huh. uh, along the way. But uh, now, uh, as I look back. I, I, I felt really stressful mm -hmm. when it came to hiring people or, mm -hmm. you know, firing people. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about, you know, the trucks, but when it comes mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the head hunting mm -hmm. and, you know, when it comes to, to deciding whether these people, uh, for example, someone makes a mess, someone, mm -hmm. uh, makes a mistake and you have to decide whether they have to go or not. It's really, it's really stressful. 
Yeah. But after making some decisions, I got used to it. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, it's much more easy. Yeah. Much easier, yeah. So you mean like starting out as a manager, the hardest part of your job was firing people because you felt for them, right? Yes. Losing their job. Yes. Now you've become more hard-headed. Yes. Like no place for emotions. Yes. It's strictly someone business. comes, someone yeah. this someone knows mm-hmm. someone who knows someone who is your relative, uh-huh. and someone comes and they say, "Hey, I know this, 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 this. Uh-huh. We're you know uh, very uh, close relatives, uh-huh. and I would appreciate if you gave me this opportunity of working uh-huh. here." And the the worst part is saying no. Mm-hmm. Say, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're my brother. Mm. It doesn't matter if you are my blood brother or mm. anyone else. Mm. If you're not suitable, uh, if, if, if you're not for this, if you're not for this job, the answer is still no. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, when I had to fire someone, and of course you, felt, you feel for them and uh, your decision... Mm-hmm. Uh, makes a big change in their life mm-hmm. and understanding all this and keeping that all in mind it's kind of stressful mm-hmm. uh, doing this decision mm-hmm. but as uh, time went I learned uh, you know making decisions only from the company's perspective mm-hmm. is the is this decision that I'm doing uh, mm-hmm. benefit does this decision benefit the company or the, it doesn't I don't care about the others. Mm-hmm. I don't care about the people. I don't care about the person who is getting fired. I mm-hmm. only care about company. That's it. Right. <clears throat> it's business, nothing personal, right? That's what uh, you're saying. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just business. You, you, I actually have some of that spirit when I'm, you know, running this school. There comes, there come times when I have to put on my manager hat. And I'm not that empathetic anymore, like most teachers are, right? Like a teacher is supposed to be. And I have multiple responsibilities here, one of which is teaching, and I have to be understanding, right, caring. But you can't really bring that personality when you're running this school because you always have to have the school's interest in mind. Sometimes me and Alicia have a little bit of, you know, conflict of interest or I have conflict of interest with uh, other people, you know, who have been working here and I feel for them, but at the end of the day, I have to keep the school's interest in mind, not theirs, not mine. This, I always have to put school first and I totally can relate to what you're saying here. Company yes. comes first, right? You guys- Even before c- yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh Even yeah. Even before yourself. Oh yeah. So it's like a whole different entity and you have to feed it, you have to take care of it, you have to water it. Or you have to weed out the bad parts, right? So, keep, so make it keep growing, right? Yes. And when you see that your decisions are affecting people in so mm-hmm. many big ways, right? Mm-hmm. If you hire someone, as I said, I hired my cousin, mm-hmm. not because he was my cousin, but because mm-hmm. uh, he was suitable for the job. Mm-hmm. And after four months, he's making 900, 900 800 of whatever the money they are making in mm-hmm. their life. Is completely changed mm-hmm. and uh, to the better, I think. Mm-hmm. And when you see this, and uh, when you realize that you have this power mm-hmm. in your hands, mm-hmm. it's you know, it's really interesting. It's mm-hmm. something that I have never felt before, mm-hmm. and uh, it brings me joy when mm-hmm. I see the result of me hiring someone, and uh, it works very good for them. Yeah, and like pulling themselves and their family out of poverty and putting yes, themselves exactly. back on track. Exactly. And be able to put, pay and their bills. And they're forever grateful. Yeah. And yeah, I always say, it's not because of me, it's mm-hmm. because of you. You're mm-hmm. doing this mm-hmm. and you're getting what you deserve. Right. That's it. Right. Yeah. We talked a lot about your job, but and there are still things I want to talk about. But mm-hmm. there are some other topics I'd like to touch on, like, you know, your, your background. We've been okay. friends for t- almost 10 years now. I, yeah. I think this year is literally th- going to be a decade. This is our 10-year anniversary now because we met in, back in 2015, right? 15 years. When we were studying math. Yes. Right, when we were cramming for our university exam. Yes. Right. Uh, do you remember the story when we met? Because uh, I honestly don't. I guess I actually, guess, yeah. we, it, it, was, it was not like, you know, we met and we mm. just talked. Mm. Uh, it was, uh, we used to 
go to the same course. We used to have the same teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and along the way, we you know mm -hmm. we started talking, we started mm -hmm. you know interacting, mm -hmm. we started talking to each other, we started mm -hmm. going out, mm -hmm. and you know having dinner together mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how we you know how how we became friends i guess yeah. over time i remember i actually remember this one distinct time you pulled a prank on me and i can't <laughs> yes. still forgive you for that. i spoiled some movie right? yeah yeah i at the time I, w I was a crazy mcu fan like i was obsessed with marvel movies you know and it, around that time movie logan was going to be released yeah, right yeah, and yeah, i'd yeah. been eagerly waiting for that movie and yeah and this guy comes and before I watch the movie, he comes and spoils the plot. He, he doesn't. You didn't actually spoil the, most the plot. Part. He, he actually, he actually blackmailed me. He said that if I <laughs> did not get him what he wanted, he was gonna spoil the movie. And he knew that I, I, I was a sucker for movies. He knew I was a sucker for movie Logan. So he used that as a to yeah, take yeah, advantage yeah. of I me. I didn't think that, <laughs> yeah. that you were you were that serious. But that, after at that, that point, I actually I almost considered quitting that. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course, and yeah. It was crazy. It was just crazy. over a movie. That's just insane how stupid, how how, how dumb it's I was back stupid, then. It's not stupid, actually. <laughs> after that, I realized when Avengers came out, uh -huh. you know, uh, after, I met you, after I met you, uh, you told me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the best to watch the uh, movie in original language mm -hmm. and with subti subtitles and not in uh, dub. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I started watching... Uh, MCU movies included only in original, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. original audio uh, with original, uh, I mean, original actors' mm -hmm. voices and mm -hmm. with subtitles. And uh, in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent, we didn't have th theaters who, w which put on the, or the, the movie with original audio. Mm -hmm. And we used to wait like one year after a movie came out. <laughs> And we used it's, to watch it with the subtitles. Yeah. And I also had to wait one year after the Avengers movie came out. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, during this one year, yeah. I had a lot of the a lot, a lot of cases when someone spoiled the movie to me. Uh -huh. It was really awful. Yeah. I really wanted to kill them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's very bad. It's very <laughs> awful feeling when yeah. when someone spoils the movie. Mm -hmm. They take all the joy. Mm -hmm. Right. I used to watch movies. Like, no, no. I, I, I honestly don't. I, I don't have time for movies anymore. Not right now. I mean, yeah. uh, the after the last movie it was mm. Endgame, mm -hmm. Avengers Endgame. After that, I stopped watching. Oh, that was years ago, buddy. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And after that, so. uh, Marvel uh, mm. stopped doing, stopped mm. making good movies. Yeah. Uh, but oh, you know, hold your breath. The Mar Marvel got a lot of great movies coming out this year and the next year. Yeah, I'm, Are, I'm 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 really excited for that uh, Deadpool three. Deadpool three, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine. That one is gonna be a real treat for yes. MCU fans like us. Oh my God! Finally, that's happening. It's finally yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been dying to see them together on the screen, and he, they're oh, finally we get to see. Uh, we, we will get to do that. And I, I, are you still a movie mm -hmm. guy or? I, I also think that you stopped watching movies, right? Not really. I'm not. I'm not. I don't remember when was the last time I watched. Oppenheimer, but only just fast forward and watch the yeah, highlights of the movie. Disappointed in. at Oppenheimer. Yeah, probably. I, I don't. I don't understand why it got so much attention on theaters. Yeah. It's just probably because of the producer Christopher Nolan, yeah. Christopher Nolan right? Yeah. It's a big because name producer. producer, right? Right. And the other movie I'm hyped up for is a new Captain America movie. Did you see okay. the trailer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. That was, was crazy. insane. MC is finally back on track. Yeah. It's, I feel Listen, like it's finally back. You might on be track. Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Well, it's 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 really epic. That that line it's was really jaw dropping. Yeah. Okay, you might be Captain America, but you're not, you're not Steve, Steve Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. That made me feel something. That struck a chord in me, guys. Yeah, I literally yeah, got goosebumps same. on yeah, my yeah, body. I really got goosebumps as well. That takes a lot of screenwriting and careful thinking and cinematography to get that sort of reaction out of audience. Yes. Right. And why, that, that's the reason why we loved uh, Marvel so much. Mm -hmm. It's because of their attention to details. Yeah. Nothing on the screen is uh, mm -hmm. just, is, is there, mm -hmm. everything on the screen, 
everything is on the screen for a reason. Right, calculated. Yeah, calculated. Exactly. Everything is there for exactly. a reason. So that's why we love Marvel so much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, may, maybe we will see it. Uh -huh. The next year, uh, they will gain their popularity mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. We will see. Yeah, I hope so. All right, we talked a lot about entertainment. What do you say we, you tell our audience a little about your school background as well? Because you went to one of the top schools in the entire country, Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. and that's Karakul. Karakul, and this, this school is known for being excellent in math and English and a bunch of other STEM subjects. So what was your experience of going to that school? I was yeah. 11 years old. Uh -huh. uh, I was 11 years old. I was at fourth grade, and mm -hmm. uh, my one day my father came to me and said, "Hey, you're going to Karakul," mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that meant, uh -huh. but it meant you know uh, abandoning my family and going uh, to Karakul, mm -hmm. where uh, my f father was from, mm -hmm. and living with my grandmother and grandfather. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was 11 years old. I went there. And uh, I just, you know, started studying. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, I'm not sure if it was, if it was that necessary uh -huh. uh, because I was like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. When I went there, I mm -hmm. started, uh, when I started, started studying there, I was 11 years old and 11, 11 year old kid uh, studying from five to, from, from eight to five every day mm -hmm. with uh, under, very high pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was necessary, but yeah, I did that. Uh, <clears throat> when you study in Karakul as a kid, it's really, really hard because uh, you uh, almost abandon everything that brings joy to the you mm -hmm. know to a little kid. For example, playing football, playing anything else, playing outside. Mm -hmm. uh, playing outdoors, playing anything. And no phones, I'm guessing. Nothing, nothing no like that. Movies, just studying. Not even radio. <laughs> not even radio. Just studying. <laughs> Every day. You start at 7, 7.30, mm -hmm. you finish at 5, you come mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. you do homework for another two hours. Mm -hmm. The same, same thing uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow. And do they... Every day. Do they give you at least food? <laughs> of course they do. Yeah, uh, when I studied at school, uh -huh. uh, I used to come to my. I used to return to my home every day. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I, you know, uh, entered the lyceum, when I started, when I started studying at lyceum, mm -hmm. it was uh, like level leveling up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a place you cannot even call it the dormitory, but there was a place you have to live there for. Uh, better part of the week mm -hmm. for like six days. And then on Saturday afternoon, uh, Saturday noon, you go home. But the conditions under mm -hmm. which we used to live and study, uh, those are the hardest, hardest part. Mm -hmm. So you wake up, <clears throat> if it's winter, you have to, uh, you had to bring uh, a bottle of water uh, from the well, from the well and put it uh, to the, uh, inside mm -hmm. uh, so it get it gets warm so you you brush your teeth mm -hmm. and you do uh, all those good good things and you know you so go you don't have working tap no tap nothing water. nothing no 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 yeah it's like being back in the old, old yeah dark in ages stone age. in stone age <laughs> yeah you go uh <laughs> have a breakfast at seven thirty. that's so and, sad uh, your study mm -hmm. starts at eight mm -hmm. and you study until seven Mm -hmm. every day so mm -hmm. it's uh how many hours from eight to seven mm -hmm. it's about 11 hours it, yeah yeah practically a half a day every day and after that <clears throat> you also do your homework for two three more hours mm -hmm. and uh, you cannot leave the area of the lyceum mm -hmm. it's uh it's a big place but you know it's very old um and uh you, you cannot have phones, you cannot have, as you said, radio, you cannot have anything mm -hmm. electrical, mm -hmm. you cannot have music, mm -hmm. all you can have is just your book, that's it. Mm -hmm. If you leave the area, you're punished. Oh, what's their punishment like? So what's, a, what's punishment for... They just let sneaking? you go. Yeah, you just get suspended from school right yes. away. Yes, for the first time, I mean, yeah. uh, they warn you, mm -hmm. you have a warning, about, but the second time, you just, they just let you go. Mm -hmm. That's it. And what's punishment for not doing homework? 
They just let you go. They just let you go. Yeah. A- yes. A- at least they don't beat you up, so that's good. They do. <laughs> oh, they do. They do. Wow. Now, But, I think it's. Um, but back in your days, not they, acceptable. Yeah. Beating up kids is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. I am very, very, very opposed to it. <clears throat> But at that, at, at those times, it was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, if you didn't, <laughs> study, if you didn't study, you got you got beat up by your by your teacher. Wow. How how, how can the girls, bro? Even the girls. Even the girls got yeah, beat yeah, up. Yeah. Oh my God! What yeah. are those? Who are those monsters? They are monsters, but you know those policies. Uh, yeah, harsh policies had mm. results. Mm. Uh, if I now look back, they mm. they some of their policies didn't make sense. For example, if you uh, didn't have a tie, mm. you couldn't you know attend the class. You just went. You just you just had to go. Mm. And like, how 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 is it going to affect your you know attendance or your yeah. uh, class if you don't have a tie, bro? Come mm. on. Mm-hmm. It's just a tie. Yeah. And if your hair was too long, you had to go. Mm-hmm. Or if your nails too yeah too long, nails too long, you, you had to, to go, go. And clip your nails. Yeah, those crazy things. Yeah. I think uh, with, with, with those policies, they had mm-hmm. they wanted to implement the discipline. For example, uh, if you pay attention to those little things, uh, then you pay attention to your. Uh, to your class, to your, uh, mm. to your studying, yeah. And uh, you know, I was from Bukhara, and uh, I every week I had, I used to see my family, but they were people from as as far as uh, Farhona, mm-hmm. as far as Andijan, as far as Tashkent, mm-hmm. who used to come and uh, study in mm-hmm. Karakul. It's middle of nowhere, bro. Mm-hmm. And the only reason they came was because. Of the teachers, mm-hmm. and because of the knowledge mm-hmm. which you know they used to study mm-hmm. there, and uh, they would see their families mm-hmm. twice a year. Mm-hmm. When the study is ended mm-hmm. uh, in uh, May, and uh, one in one one time in uh, Christmas, mm-hmm. in New Year, mm-hmm. that's it. And they used to spend all mm-hmm. the all the year in, in, in Karaku. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere with mm-hmm. the <clears throat> completely strange people. Mm-hmm. And that's how they studied. For, for those people, it was much harder uh, than, than, than it was for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought to myself, hey, and this could be you know, worse. Mm-hmm. So you had yeah. to focus. So looking back, uh, what, did you gain, what did you get out of that experience? How do you think that experience changed you? Uh, as you said, math, uh-huh. um, the English was not that good there, but mm-hmm. uh, math, yeah. physics, chemistry, mm-hmm. those subjects were taught at highest level. Mm-hmm. And to this day, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the people who go to, uh, who go to Olympiads abroad are from those schools. Mm-hmm. And I had a team I had a class classmate who went to Brasilia uh, from a mess mm-hmm. and they, they, he got second place he got silver mm-hmm. something like that and the, the best part the best the best part of studying Karaku is your friends is your uh, you get to you, you get to study with people who are very very talented Mm-hmm. very very talented and most probably in the future they uh, those people will be holding places the highest places in, uh, in government or highest places in very big companies so this is the best part I think network mm-hmm. networking do you still keep touch with your friends from Kamarco? I do they keep, they keep in touch with me mm-hmm. that's the interesting part yeah. I, I'm not very social guy anymore mm-hmm. but they keep in touch with me uh This guy Abdul Malik, his was his name. His name is Abdul Malik. Mm-hmm. Uh, now he studies in U.S. in uh, Duke's University in Illinois, mm-hmm. and uh, he wanted me to go. He wanted me to go there with him, but uh, I refused mm-hmm. because of my family condition. 
But even even now and even like in two three weeks, he texts me. Mm-hmm. He asks me how am I how how I am doing, mm-hmm. and all that. You know, it's really good. Yeah, right, right. And fast forward to 2017 when we got into university, right? Mm-hmm. So we 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 both won a scholarship, right? We got into university, and yes. so how how do you? What do you think of our university experience? What memories do you have of our past years back in university? University, mm-hmm. <clears throat> right? There are a lot of things I didn't do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was a mistake to work. Mm-hmm. It was a mistake to work. I should have spent more time studying. Mm-hmm. Should have spent more time, you know. Uh, For the record, at the time we both had a part-time teaching job, right? Yes, yes. And you think that was a mistake, right? Yeah, I should have enjoyed the time. I should have, you know, mm-hmm. enjoyed the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Because if you compare my uh, studying uh, and studying in Karakul and studying in university was, mm-hmm. uh, for, it was like from desert you're going to castle. Mm-hmm. You know, it was that big change. Yeah, we so got, I was we very got, excited. Comfortable, but, right? Yeah, but we all worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all didn't want to, you know, get any money from our parents. Mm-hmm. We all wanted to be independent. Mm-hmm. But I think that was a mistake, right? Yeah. Plus, we were a little euphoric at the time because we won a scholarship, right? Yeah. We thought we were top of the world. Yeah, we used to make fun of all the other guys sometimes. Yeah, they, 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 if you remember, they calculated the price of each lesson. Uh-huh. For example, if they missed a class, mm-hmm. they would it, it was cost them like sixty five dollars or something mm-hmm. because their uh, tuition fee was about was around three mm-hmm. thousand dollars, and they divided the uh, the whole the total number of classes they divided their their tuition fee and they found out how much it cost how much each class cost them. Mm-hmm. For example, if they m- missed a class, it was like sixty five dollars something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, it's very very expensive for them. Yeah, but uh, we didn't pay anything so. I think we took that for granted. Yeah, yeah. We took that for granted. We should have been more appreciative of that opportunity. I right. think it was. Mm-hmm. It always was uh, very, uh, you know, easy for me. Mm-hmm. For example, m- m- many things that you uh, people, other people, uh, had hard time studying mm-hmm. or struggled to understand. Mm-hmm. It came very easy to me, and if, mm-hmm. if you remember, even even for the even even for the. Uh, ex- exams we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to study like one day, two days, two days, and that's <laughs> yeah. It. Just cram the night, uh, cram the night before the yes. exam, and you're good. You're getting. Th- that's the crazy part about this guy. Okay, you just cram the night before the exam, and it just go and uh, smash it. It just go and uh, come back with ninety five, hundred sometimes, right? Yeah, it, it's it, just insane. It, it, it and and, and, and guys who would study for two, three, four, five weeks straight would end up with. 60 70 I and mean, that's not fair that's not fair right it actually it actually it, it's not good because i didn't study mm-hmm. you know it all came naturally mm-hmm. easy for me mm-hmm. and i didn't ha- i didn't have to study uh for a long time uh mm-hmm. to pass the subject mm-hmm. but you know at the end of the day uh, if you look back at it it worked out not good for me because i uh could have studied more Could have learned more, could have been better. Mm-hmm. That's why. Right, right. So, w- what part of like uni life you enjoyed the most? Was it the social aspect of things? And clearly, you weren't big fan of academics because they were w- way below your level, right? Le- l- way below your pay grade now. So was it the social life? Was it the yeah, the life athletic? in dormitory? I would say. <laughs> let's not open that chapter, okay? <laughs> dormitory. Yeah, let's not go back to that chapter. Why not? Because Why not? to me, that's one of the. Yeah, you know, it's one of the lockers I I've shut, and I don't ever want to open it. For me, it was <laughs> good. For me, yeah. Because uh, because you were bullying me the entire time. Well, that's of course <laughs> not, bro. You're so wrong. <laughs> I was I, maybe I was having jokes. Yeah. I was no. joking, not bullying you. Because this guy used to hide my clothes, he used to uh, hide my food, he used to call me names. Mama, hey, Mama come Mama on. Everybody, everybody did that. Everybody did that. Yeah. Uh, everybody who was like 18, 19 years old, yeah. they had some jokes. I didn't know that mm-hmm. you took 
those jokes that serious? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. But yeah, still, no I offense. had good time, bro. I had yeah. good time. We so uh, did I, I. I still remember the meal, uh-huh. the uh, the palov we yeah. cooked. Yeah, uh, we did the we did the shopping. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh did. yeah, and we, when we, I came, he gave up the whole food. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? To her. Okay. All right. So the other thing is, I was we had- so pissed. I still have the picture. <laughs> Maybe if I can, you know, after after the podcast, I can provide the picture that you can, you know, put it here. I still have the picture of us three uh-huh. and the. Uh, and the canteen yeah having, uh, yeah please do share that photo because he's gonna put it on the podcast okay I yeah, ne- never did that before yeah i remember we used to split responsibilities i was in charge of cooking you were in charge of washing the dishes hey, someone's in charge of cook, cleaning you, you cooked so good <laughs> damn bro like yeah and, and I, I remember you cooked so good bro yeah, yeah. I, I still remember the your kebabs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they were so good and not the skewer kebabs guys for the record it's just uh potatoes and meat yeah, for the record he is very very you know peaky guy he, he would clean everything mm-hmm. like to the to the crystal clear oh, yeah. the, everything again and again Sh- shiny before, just before shiny. even starting yeah he would clear everything every yeah. equipment every knife every yeah. fork every yeah. you know Everything. Yeah, the, utensils, right? Yes. And, and a kebab was the only thing I cooked. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was good. Bro. Yeah, was every good. night we'd have the same food. Remember we used to go to the gym? Yeah. Uh, I, I went to the gym only for a month and then I dropped. Yeah, I can also, yeah. you know, mm. uh, share the pictures if you want to put them on here. Uh, we, we, there are photos of us posing the gym, at the yes, gym. Yes. My God. Okay, please do share those photos. We want to okay. put, them, okay, we wanna put them on the podcast. So we want people see what we were like back then right <clears throat> yeah right. and how we changed over time yeah. yeah of course i will you know those this mm-hmm. dormitory life was very good mm-hmm. uh, you know we had fun every night mm-hmm. uh we used to play football mm-hmm. and we used to train uh-huh. uh we used to do push-ups mm-hmm. i mean pull-ups and uh, oh, yeah, yeah it was fun yeah was and the of preparation of us mm-hmm. to the work and travel mm-hmm. but that I'm glad you brought that up because I have I have just that chapter prepared here with a bunch of questions. I want to talk about our U.S. experience. So, uh, so we were both participants of the so-called program work and travel. Mm-hmm. So you get to go to the U.S., work there for four months, and make some money and travel and whatnot, right? Yes. So you want to talk a little about what your experience was like working in the U.S. and traveling there? Uh, <coughs> okay, to begin with. Uh, we are. Uh, we were not f- one of the lucky ones who got mm. accepted from Intrax. In- mm. Intrax. So me and I, uh, me and you, both of us, were uh, had to sign looking with a for different for the, agency, for the yeah, right. this summer to 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 find an agency, mm-hmm. and we had some frauds mm-hmm. as well. But we were lucky enough. We got mm-hmm. uh, we got recommended by our mutual friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who, what was his name? I guess it was Ibeg. Ibeg, yeah. Yes, Shout out to Ibeg if he's watching yes, us. He Shout is. out to him. From Nukus or... No, yes, Nukus. Kar- Karakal Karakal Pakistan, Pakistan, yeah. Right, yeah. For, Great guy. For, for the right amount of money, he recommended us both. <laughs> oh, he did charge us <laughs> did, a little did, did for that. Did you pay? Did you pay? Of course I did. 300? Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I did. But yeah, it was very good and we got uh, accepted. Uh-huh. And uh, mm-hmm. I remember we... Did we travel? Did, did did we fly together? No, uh, no. You and Ali shared that, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Me, Ali shared the Hungary. Yeah. yeah, it was really was good, man. Guys. It was really good. And mm. I also have some, you know, uh, things I wanted to do but didn't do. Yeah. I had some things I regret not doing in US or so, maybe doing. Well, what are those things? Uh, I thought only about making money. Mm. So did I. I yeah. mean, my sole intention, ob- objective, going there was and to I was, work there. The I thought I was making good money then. Yeah, uh, and you did, I guess. You did. You, you were working around the clock. Yes, right? seventeen hours. And getting paid minimum wage of ten dollars an hour, right? And plus, mm, you made I some was, yeah, I was over, tips. overtime I was money. Tips. You made money in tips. Come on, that's I, that's I, good I, money. I buddy. still think. I know mm. you don't want to talk. Uh, I I I know you hate uh, talking about money uh-huh. but i still think you are the one who made the most amount <laughs> from the us i think i think you made about 20 grand 
Uh, uh, let me let me correct you here. Okay, people. Everyone keeps asking me how much I made when I was in the U.S. When trust me, I made the least. No, nah, I made nah, the nah, least bro. amount on, of money. Bro. You were bartender. I was not. I was not you lucky. Were bartender, bro. <laughs> there is no way you made. Uh, the I, I was not a bartender. I was a barback. Barback is the assistant of of a of a bartender. Whatever, so, bro. You made <laughs> the most money. You made the most money. I, <clears> just, I was working. You were in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about meeting with Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. Was Mr. Beast a thing at the time? You can't believe it. Actually, in one of his videos, he meets a lady who was my former colleague. Damn. Yeah, it, it just happened in two different years. Okay, I, is I, it one I, of those videos he gave? You know, um, gives, gives away like a lot of ten thousand dollars to a windy worker. I used to work at that exact Wendy's. Damn. Auto banks. I just couldn't believe when I saw that lady. I was like, she used to be my colleague. We used to work together. Yeah, yeah, that's Next, crazy. Hispanic lady. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I was in Maryland, Ocean uh -huh. City, Maryland. My first job was... Uh, uh, my first job was... As a server? Yeah, it's, yeah, I was a server. And my second job... Oh, no, my, my first job was a uh, prep cook. Mm -hmm. But I was lucky enough. They got me a bike. So mm -hmm. I... The pizza delivery. And my second job was a server, mm -hmm. and I used to work seventeen hours, bro. I remember. That's insane. Seventeen hours. Every I day. used to, every day. I used to sleep like for four hours, five hours max every day. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, how did I do it? <laughs> now mean? I make even. I make the same amount or even more, and mm -hmm. I only work nine hours a day. But mm -hmm. you know, at the time I was thinking, yeah, I'm making this money i'm mm. you know i have to make money i have to buy this i have to buy that and even when it, the summer ended i didn't travel mm -hmm. so i was thinking about you know uh i i don't want to you know waste mm -hmm. my money mm -hmm. but it was the stupidest thing mm -hmm. uh someone could do you know uh i had to now, if it i should have yeah. i should have traveled if it makes you feel any better, I didn't do any traveling either, okay? I know. The two, two of us were the only guys from our squad yeah. who did not do any traveling. Just went we're straight there. So stupid. And we're so stupid. The entire summer. The, 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 we we mm -hmm. thought, yeah, may, maybe next year, right? Mm -hmm. This year I have to work. Next year I, I will come back and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I will travel more. Mm -hmm. But next year COVID happened and mm -hmm. uh, we, we, never had the, we, we never had the chance to go back. Yeah. But I think if we want now, we can go back easily. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, why not? You, if you would need a travel visa, though, right? Like an immigrant. What, no, what no. Kind of visa if, would you if, need? if 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 you uh, uh, if if I'm 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 talking about F one visa. Mm -hmm. If you study your uh, masters, degree. masters, yeah, masters, yeah, there. No, chances are uh, they're gonna still turn me down because my brother is, is in the U.S. right now. So and that might hurt my chances of going to the U.S. Like his when. You if, have, he, if he is legit, which he is, yeah. you still have, you know, I think it will, uh, it, it will be better for you. The odds will be better for you. Now, I, I'm honestly not thinking about going to the U.S. I actually got offered to play DV lottery, green card. That's what we call it. Mm -hmm. My brother was like, okay, hey, I'm in the U.S. I know a few tricks. Let me sign you up for DV lottery. I can get you a green card. And for a moment, my my heart was saying, yes, go for it. Okay, you want to do that. And just so you know, it happened not long ago. And, and then I later thought to myself, okay, even if there is 1% possibility, 1% chance I'm getting in, I'm winning that lottery, right? I'm going to the US, right? Isn't that going to take away my attention, my mind from what I'm doing here, what I'm trying to build in this city, in this country, right? And... I thought to myself, okay, I don't, I don't really need Plan B here. So I, I said to my brother, okay, uh, keep it. Not interested. But even yeah. if you won, would you go? Probably not, because yeah, because because I'm because I'm now so laser focused on this on the all these projects I'm working here, and I feel like uh, I I should be insane to leave all this behind and start start anew, start all over in the U.S. Because if I go to the U.S., that's what everyone's telling me. You should go to the U.S. You would be amazing when you're in the U.S. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm in the U.S., I'm going to be nobody. Exactly. I'll be nobody. <laughs> right? It, I'm, I, I'm here in the city, 
I have all this admiration and respect, and and I'm grateful for all this you know support I'm getting from people around me and students and the people on the internet. I'm not going to have any of these things when I'm in the U.S. So how stupid you should be to drop all this. Quit everything and you go. Quit everything and everything you worked your entire life for and start all over. I'm not, I haven't lost my mind yet. So next time, please don't even consider asking me if I want to go to the U.S. Yeah, so to a lot of people that, might, yeah. uh, that, that answer might be shocking because mm -hmm. uh, the most frequent uh, The most frequent thing I got asked when I came back, even mm -hmm. to this day, I get asked, "Hey, have you been to the U.S.?" Mm -hmm. uh, I say, "Yeah." I say, "Yes." Why did you come mm -hmm. back? I mean, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, you could have stayed. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to go to the U.S. now? Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go to the U.S.? Yeah. For what? Yeah. People think that U.S. is some place, you know, from the, from the fairy tale. Yeah, and the, where... The money grows on the trees. <laughs> exactly. No. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, no. So, it's nothing like that. You have to work your ass off, even if, even to be, you know, to, some, to be someone. And you, you, you will still be... Yes, you will be making more there, and, uh, but every other disadvantage that comes with it. People who have never been to U.S. doesn't understand it, but uh, when, you're actually, when, you, you, when you actually go there, you, uh, you will be much more appreciative of what you have now, you know? <coughs> And uh, the, the, the money that they are making, the money that they, they are promised to, make, to, you know, to make in U.S., they can make here. Mm -hmm. If they are hard workers, if they work hard enough, mm -hmm. for example, even my job pays really good, uh, If you are, if the sole purpose of you going to the U.S. is money, it's not worth it. For example, if you want to go travel, if you want to go meet some more, uh, meet new people, meet new uh, cultures I and mean, everything, then yes, you can go travel for one month, two months, and come back. But no, not, I'm not. I'm not staying there. <clears throat> right. Because those little things, you know, even food, will be. Uh, My, uh, will come to much greater importance when you're when you're in the U.S. Even bread, mm -hmm. I, I I'm a bread guy. <laughs> I yeah. ate bread every day. And when when I was in the U.S., there was no bread. Like mm -hmm. how? Mm -hmm. How come no one eats bread there? Yeah, they have bread. <coughs> they have yeah. they have store bread. Yeah, store. Uh, it, it sucks, bro. It's, yes, no, the, the, our our national bread is the best. And those little things mm -hmm. will start coming to the light. Mm -hmm. And you will realize, uh, mm -hmm. after all, it was not a good idea to go mm -hmm. there. But the experience we had in mm -hmm. Manhattan, uh, in New York City, Central Park, those are unforgettable moments. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would go there uh, again, only to fulfill those experiences, mm -hmm. uh, to live those experiences again. Mm -hmm. uh, the people that I met, the people mm -hmm. I talk to still to this day, Yeah, that's the most important, most exciting thing I got from the U.S. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, interesting, I have an inter inter interesting story. Uh, when we were walking, uh, I used to work in a, in a beach in the, uh, Ocean City. It's, it's, it's a city on, uh, on the beach. So it's a co coastal city, right? Yeah, coastal city, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, if I go, if I went out from my apartment mm -hmm. and uh, walked like, Three minutes, I mm. would be in the beach and I would be in the ocean, Atlantic mm. Ocean. Mm. And uh, one of those nights I had, uh, I was walking with my friend uh, on the beach and uh, they were, you know, they, it's, it's usual in, in the US, they, they have those ceremonies, they talk about Jesus, they talk mm. about Christianity mm -hmm. and everything. And they were talking about Jesus and mm. I, I got curious and I got, you know, into discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still remember that discussion with the, with, the, with the guy who was, you know, promoting Christianity. Mm -hmm. He was talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, that was very interesting. Yeah, what, 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 what happened? What went At the time, there? I didn't have that much, you know, religious knowledge. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was interesting for me as a Muslim mm -hmm. to get, you know, uh, to get into interaction with those people and uh, talk to them about, about Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, if I had this opportunity, if I had this opportunity now, 
uh, I would do a lot better. But at the time, it was, you know, just, mm -hmm. hey, I'm Muslim. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you're doing the right thing. Something like that. Oh, so <clears throat> what, were, what were they doing that was wrong? Um, they, 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 if, if, if you go into this topic, right, they, they, they think Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jesus is not God. Jesus is the messenger of the God. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to explain them this, but, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have enough uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I could do a lot better job. Mm -hmm. Right. They think Jesus is God. Yeah. They think Jesus is God, but Jesus is not God, you know. Uh, in our in our religion, it's 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 the messenger. Mm -hmm. He's the he's a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, but they think he's 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 God. They inter they interpret mm -hmm. the words of God in a different different way. But but I've learned that it's not the case in all sects of Christianity. You know, it, really it is the case. No, they all think Jesus is God, bro. Not not really. Okay, I'd, I'd back to differ. There are uh, a lot. So it really depends on which sect you're from. Sect? Sect. Like, it means like a group. Like, there are two testaments, old one and new one. And they both think Jesus is God, bro. They, they think Jesus died for their sins. Uh -huh. And it's, it's actually stupid, don't you think? Someone... No, I, I, think, I think you might be wrong here because when I say sect, I mean in Islam too, there are two sects. There is Shia and there is Sunni. Right? Yes, yes. So, and they have different sects. They have Catholic Church mm -hmm. and they have... Mm -hmm. uh, it's all these different sects and the, the, so depending on which sect you belong to you have different interpretation perception of Jesus but a lot of them realize they all that. think in Christianity they all think Jesus is, mm -hmm. Jesus, is, Jesus is God no that, it's, <laughs> it's a little complicated than that I I think we're poorly educated to yes ta to talk, talk about it yes to talk maybe. about it but uh, yeah we're not maybe you're from different talk. different church Mm. But it's the same. Uh, it's the same religion, and Cause, the cause, uh, the idea of the religion is the same across all the sects, across all the you know, uh, across all the things. Yeah, um, see, I've lately been reading some scriptures, and you know, got curious about religion myself a bit too, and found out that it's just there were a lot of you know Christian like my trainer. Mr. Vadim, great example. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a he's a new co convert. Like he said, he did not practice religion much. He started going to the church now. And the other day, he was telling me his experience of how he found, you know, how he started believing in God and his messenger Jesus. He was and he was he played a an audio track of one of the pastors. At his church, speaking, and, and I was listening to it, and he was describe he was not describing Jesus as God. He he was describing God as God. So yes, right? when, when, you the Bible, when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, clear separation. Yeah, it's, it's the cre it's, the, there is a clear separation, but when the way mm. they interpret it, yeah. they think Jesus is God, and they think that Jesus uh, died for their sins, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, yeah, I think I, I I'm also. I'm also, you know, a uh, little too, a uh, little too, mm. too little educated to yeah. talk about it. But you exactly. know, the, the, the the general idea, the general yeah. idea is that mm -hmm. they think that Jesus is God mm -hmm. when their own book says, mm -hmm. you know, clearly uh, separates God from Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in Islam, we believe that the Jesus was the messenger of God, mm -hmm. the messenger, the prophet before mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we also view him as a messenger of God, mm -hmm. but we think that the Muhammad is the last messenger. You know, right. when, when when you grow up, you you, you it, did, did you notice that when you grow up, you start um, make uh, you, you start you start reading mm -hmm. and uh, you start uh, being more curious about religion mm -hmm. when you when mm -hmm. you grow up. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, cause is that is, is 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 this the case with you as well? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. It's just some because sometimes I look back on my life, and I just try to you know add things up. It's like an equation, right? And there's always something one variable missing. I I can't I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what that variable is. And a lot of people call it luck, right? But it's too lame. I think it's yes. lame. It's so lame saying that it's just luck. Okay, it can can possibly be luck, 
right? Is that is that so? Do you seriously believe that all you know, everything around us, our planet, our solar system, the universe is operating on luck? That's came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, came out of nowhere. Yeah, when That's you think so hard about to it, believe. When you think that about it, so hard to believe. Like, uh, you get you get mm -hmm. to believe that you know mm -hmm. God created everything. Yeah. You become more mm -hmm. close. You become closer. Mm -hmm. You become more open-minded. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, lately, uh, I myself mm -hmm. as well have been reading a lot of literature. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I watch videos mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, from English uh, sheikhs, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of you know uh, reading myself as well. Mm -hmm. So in in, ec in econometric, they call it error mm -hmm. function error function mm -hmm. and but as you mentioned it's not an error maybe it's mm -hmm. it's a variable uh, you know which uh holding this which, yeah holding uh, together yes. right. uh, you, you might you might you might call it god's influence mm -hmm. as well so it is it really is yeah it's a, a very personal topic to touch on right <coughs> i i have a lot of views on religion too but i honestly want to keep them to myself because for one there's they're still at their infancy. Like, I'm, I'm so shallow, so shallow. It's a big platform now, and I don't want to say something that would offend people or something that I'm not entirely sure what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you don't so want to say which is something mm, which is wrong. Yeah, yeah. I can talk for hours about IELTS, right? Something I've been part of, involved in. But uh, when it comes to, you know, I faith and religions... We should leave this conversation to better educated people. Yes. Right? Okay. I agree. All right. We talked quite a bit about your travel experience. Like to close off this chapter, I want to ask you to recount your best, the biggest highlight of your experience in the U.S. The biggest highlight. So this moment you can't forget. Is it tough to pick one? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure if I can say this or no, but yeah. uh, um, meeting uh, mm -hmm. people who are who has uh, who have not traditional orientation. Uh huh. So I mean, listen, uh, no no filters, no censorship. Go ahead. So what do meeting you gay people. Yeah, yeah. When it's uh, like same same sex marriage, right? Yes. That's that's so absurd, which is something we find absurd, but to them it's totally okay. Yeah, right? they, to them it uh, was totally okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when I the way I found out that my manager mm -hmm. was gay, you know, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. <laughs> oh my god, you you worked for someone who <laughs> was gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you did I had actually three or four, and like all of them were like, yeah, uh, uh -huh. not traditional oriented. Uh -huh. He was talking. His name is I think he was his name was Jack, uh -huh. and we had a smoke break. Uh -huh. And uh, he was staying. Uh, uh, I used to ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and uh, it was stressful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I asked him, "Hey, what's up?" And he said, "Hey, I just, I just broke up with my boyfriend." <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's> just what? <laughs> <laughs> then I started complete. paying attention to his uh, um, our outlooks, to his the way he is, uh, the way he carries himself, yeah, the, right? The, the things that he's wearing, and yeah. uh, I. I learned how to, you know, to mm -hmm. tell the difference. Mm -hmm. well. So how do you... All right, let's not get into that topic because, <laughs> because that's something... Yeah, for them, it was very, very natural and yeah. everyone was okay with mm -hmm. it. But for me, mm -hmm. growing up in an Islamic uh, country mm -hmm. and uh, growing up in a very um, you know, traditional, yeah. uh, traditional place, it was very yeah. unexpected, I would mm -hmm. say. So we should be... Yeah. <clears throat> should be actually less judging of these people because it's just the world you know when i ever encounter people with radically different views or uh, lifestyles or orient orientation than ours i try not to rush to judge them i try to you know i tell myself that the world is a big place and then everyone has a story and must have a reason why they're doing what they're doing, right? And that's... Not, I didn't judge them. Of, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not about business. judging. It was just it was the, 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 mm. the, the greatest but, highlight. Yeah, it just feels weird most. though, right? Yeah, it just felt weird. Yeah. They used to, you know, wear shorts, very like, 
Mm. Uh, very shorts. I mean, very uh, short shorts. Short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Pink short shorts. Yeah. And I was thinking, how, oh, bro? Like, yeah. how can they wear it? What would happen if a man went out in public wearing pink shorts and pink t-shirt? Nothing. I mean, here in Uzbekistan, if if you saw they, anyone, they, I, I don't think they can do it here. Yeah, I don't think you they can. can do it here. Because yeah. sometimes I mess with my students. I tell I tell them we talk about our favorite animals, and I tell them my favorite one is a unicorn, and my favorite color is pink. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they say, teacher, we dare you to wear a pink uh, T-shirt with unicorn print on it and come to work tomorrow. And, and, and that gets, gets, gets me scratching my head. I'm like, okay, guys, I don't want to go to jail here. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you, you, you will go to jail. It's you like, literally, uh, you yeah, go to jail. It's, for, it's forbidden uh, by law. Uh-huh. You cannot do this here. And, and that's something you should not be surprised to see overseas in the U.S. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> what well, a highlight. That's the thing I remember the what most. A, what a highlight, right? Okay, so we did quite a bit of talking about, you know, our past and study years, traveling. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you say we talk about future, sure. right? So as a young bachelor, yeah, who's ready to mingle, <laughs> are you thinking about, are you already thinking about marriage? Because that's one question I get asked a lot, honestly, and it, I'm so fed up these days, right? Yeah, it's the uh-huh. number one priority right now. Mm-hmm. And it's the downsides, one of the downsides of my job. You mm-hmm. don't get to, you know, uh, meet a lot of people because mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, are active during daytime mm-hmm. and you're sleeping at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to find the yeah. right one. I mean... If, if you guys are out there looking for the right partner who's handsome, great for looking, sure. uh, with a ton of cash, hit him up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not sure if you're talking about me, though. Okay, so uh, what do you look for in your future partner? Like, what do you have in mind <clears throat> for your future spouse? I would say mm-hmm. with a degree. Mm-hmm. So, it's uh, important, mm-hmm. not only to me, but to mm-hmm. my mother as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, a person who is kind, mm-hmm. who is honest, mm-hmm. who is loyal. Because mm-hmm. uh, loyalty is one of the most important things to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want my future spouse to be loyal as well. And uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I wouldn't say obedient, but understanding. Mm-hmm. And I also want them to be a little bit informed about religion as well. Mm-hmm. And and in religion, you have uh, you get a lot of your questions answered. Whatever questions you have about life, about situations, there are answers in mm-hmm. the religion. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm trying to learn it. I'm trying to you know dig into it a little, little deeper, a little mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. myself and. Uh, I also want to marry a person who is also, you know, mm-hmm. into this, into this thing. Yeah, into religion. I'm guessing not you, not just someone who's involved in religion, but also someone who actually is a, you know, man of or a woman of faith. Yes, faith. Right. Yes, and I also, uh, mm. uh, <clears throat> I'm also about the looks as mm. well. Right. Everyone is. The people who say looks don't matter, uh-huh. they're lying. Okay. They always matter. Yeah. I realize th- this is something uh, This is something that fades away after like mm-hmm. five, ten years. Mm-hmm. But the first impression is the most important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you like actually mm-hmm. what they look like, and mm-hmm. after that you can talk to them and get to know them more. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and that's why mm-hmm. looks are important to me as well. I mean, kids watching this podcast right now think that we're a bunch of womanizers and that we objectify girls. In so, what way? Huh? In what way? You know, objectify. Like when you, when you attach value to their looks. So well, what would you say to that? Attach value to their looks, bro. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the thing about the taste. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, you might like... Uh, if, if there is a steak, right, uh, very well made, mm-hmm. uh, cooked by a chef, mm-hmm. 
uh, you will like it, but for a vegan, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's not something standardized, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, people have different tastes, and for uh, different people, mm -hmm. uh, like different things. No, that's not what I meant. What I meant to say was like, would you settle for someone who's not, uh, say, like a Victoria's Secret model, right? <laughs> of course <laughs> not. So would you settle for someone who is not like 10 out of 10, but they meet all the other criteria you're looking for? They're like good seven or six. Right. Which is seven is good, six not. Is six not? <laughs> I actually had the, someone, yeah, it's, I had someone who met all my requirements, uh -huh. but I just couldn't make myself talk to them because I didn't, I felt nothing. Mm -hmm. And when you feel nothing, it's kind of worthless. Why know? is that? Because they're way out of your league? I, 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 you just feel something or you don't. If, uh -huh. if you feel something, you know that you know, you're interested. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the person who was found by my mother, mm -hmm. uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. It was everything else was perfect. Yeah, but when I saw mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. I didn't feel nothing. So mm -hmm. I cannot make myself, mm -hmm. you know, into talking or into you know interacting with the with the person if mm -hmm. I don't feel anything. Yeah, as a man, you have to love. As okay. a man, you have to feel the urge mm -hmm. to achieve something, achieve their, mm -hmm. uh, for example, attention, right. achieve their. Uh, mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. you have to conquer and uh, that's I think the process is the most interesting part mm -hmm. the process itself and so if there's no chase then it's not worth it right yes it, if there is it, no it, chase there has to be a chase uh, not necessarily but uh, but if there is mm -hmm. it's interesting <clears throat> Because yeah. I really don't have, I, 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 I might say that, the, you know, you have to conquer, you have to do ever, everything and all in that, mm -hmm. but I don't really have time. Mm -hmm. I'm not that guy who's, you know, uh, who spends hours talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm just straight, straightforward. I have to, you know, I want to marry and I need someone who, whom I can marry. Mm -hmm. I don't have time off for all those, you know, uh, childish talks, mm -hmm. childish meetings, Mm -hmm. You know, worseless, meaningless meetings. Yeah, going on dates, going to the movies, getting ice creams. Everything needs to have a purpose. If right. you are, if you are uh, finding time for this person, mm -hmm. if you're, uh, for example, if I find time, it, it means I'm sacrificing my sleep, mm -hmm. and this person <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> needs Better to be, be worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, if it's not leading up to something, if it's yeah. not, it doesn't. Yeah. If 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 your relationship doesn't have the mm -hmm. end goal of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, marriage. It's it's not worth it. It's mm -hmm. useless, I would say. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the young girls that I that I meet, they are about this uh, worthless meetings, worthless mm -hmm. talks, worthless everything. They need, you know, they want some romantic things. Mm -hmm. um, and but don't you think? And just, they don't even consider getting married. Yeah, just just about every girl is like that these days. Yeah, they right? they they think marriage. They they think of marriage as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. They think. Uh, when they get married, they abandon their families and, and they go to somewhere and they will be there in a bad condition. It's like form of slavery. They think about it, yes, but yeah. it's it's really interesting because uh, when I say I want to marry, mm -hmm. I mean that I'm ready for marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean I'm re ready to take responsibility mm -hmm. for this person, mm -hmm. for this person's safety, for this person's, uh, for this person's you know, future mm -hmm. and the... Uh, Everything else, you have to provide for them. You mm -hmm. have to be ready. But a lot of the girls think that when they get married, they will be in, in this in this uh, some kind of form of slavery. But it's mm -hmm. not the case at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe for some people, uh, but not not with me. Yeah. My mother is very kind, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm also very kind and very understanding. Oh yeah. I don't have I don't follow those stereotypes that a uh, mm -hmm. woman needs to stay inside. Mm -hmm. and the woman needs to stay in the kitchen no if they want to work i support whatever they make mm -hmm. is theirs and what i make whatever i make is ours that's how i think but i can't tell you something the other day i was talking to a lady student and here's what she said she said whatever i make is mine and whatever my husband makes is mine it's mine. <laughs> oh, she literally said that. <laughs> and I was standing there holding my head. Like, what, what is left to your husband then? Yeah. <laughs> and she was talking about like how, you know, it's weird that 
finances get split in the family and she was like whatever i make is mine and whatever my husband makes is it's also mine my, it's also mine i mean like that's crazy no no, no. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that yeah if you want something uh -huh. you have to be worth it you have to do something which is you know rewardable mm -hmm. and the other uh, the other day i met a girl you know mm. who was requiring a car before marriage she asked you to get her a car even before you got married N yes not not not, not like straightforward but uh -huh. she asked uh what do you think of your uh your, 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 you know wife you know driving, driving. a car uh -huh. said, yeah okay if you if you if you buy just buying uh, buy and drive i don't uh -huh. have any you know objections not, objections yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they said no i want you to buy uh-huh Okay, if I'm buying a car, mm -hmm. I mean, you need at least have a, you know, uh, give us uh, give a birth to my son. I don't know if you you, you need to do something mm -hmm. worthy mm -hmm. to the reward to earn it's, that. To yes, deserve that, right? You need to show your loyalty. You need to show your patience. You need mm -hmm. to show your love, because mm -hmm. I really think I really think it might be a very good boost in your life. Your wife, whom you. Uh, support and mm -hmm. uh, when you come from work you're very tired and they are the ones who you know who cheer you up they are the ones who support you they are the ones who um, give you this mood mm -hmm. and that you know you, you you will have this mood during the whole day mm -hmm. and if your spouse is good you will be good as well and I also uh, gave a lot of attention give, give a lot of attention to the fact that they are mother of my future sons and daughters mm -hmm. and what can they teach my son or my daughter mm -hmm. in the future what can they learn from mm -hmm. them and uh, of course everyone wants a good upbringing a good future for their children and i really give a lot of thought about what can this person teach mm -hmm. my son or my daughter so if they're if they're good if their edu education is good if, they, if they're <clears throat> view on world is good mm -hmm. and you know uh, because you live for the job and you live your your child with them mm -hmm. if there is 24 hours in a day they will be left with them and you will just spend them spend only one or two hours with your with your child and the rest is spent with their mother right that's what, how they learn what are, what are some of the lessons you would want your kids to learn growing up what are some of the some less important life lessons you would want to teach your kids from from early on, from the get go, mm, values of life, the importance of religion, uh -huh. uh, how important, uh, how is it important to work hard? How mm -hmm. is it important to be patient? How is it important to be supportive? To be respectful? Mm -hmm. To respect the others? And mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be kind, to be open-handed. I mean, to be generous. Because if you're generous, it will always pay. Uh, mm -hmm. It will always pays off for you. Mm -hmm. And I want my ch uh, and uh, I want my children have those values uh, from early on, from mm -hmm. early age. Right. Yeah. So overall, how do you feel about you know this whole prospect idea of having you know your own family one day? So you feel like prepared for this, right? Yes, I am prepared, yeah. but I can. I, I seem to have problems. Finding the right one. I mean, after this podcast, I'm still in active looks. Uh, yeah, maybe this podcast would uh, will I, I, help me. I, I, be, please uh, leave. Your, he's gonna he's gonna leave your his Instagram. Okay, ladies, if okay. you're interested, DM this guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's really hard to find the person yeah. who uh -huh. uh, purely likes yourself, mm -hmm. not and, um, the person who is not attached to materialistic things, mm -hmm. a person who's not attached to some other things, because. Nowadays, girls pay the most attention to those things. How well off you are, mm -hmm. how much money you have, or, what kind of job you do. Or what kind of car you drive. Yeah. Right, all those things. Yeah, they, they, yeah. these are important things, but, the, but they are not the most important, you know. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is how this person will treat you. How this mm -hmm. person, uh, you know, will have... Uh, will have impact on your life in what ways uh, will they have the same interests will they have the same you know views in life will they support your mother will, will they respect your elders at home this is the most important thing and when girls uh, you know most of the girls 
Yeah, they, they, if they ask for these things, they require those things from their future husband. Then I ask the question, what can you give to your husband? Most of the times the answer is silence. They cannot answer this question. The only thing that they, you know, their looks and their, you know, um, their like, beauty yeah. uh, uh, gives them the right of, you know, requiring mm. all those things. But it's not, bro. It's not. If, if you didn't achieve mm -hmm. anything, if you didn't earn anything in your life, if you and yourself are worthless, nah, it's not for me. Yeah. Because I, as I mentioned earlier, looks are important to me. Uh, we're... Whereas they shouldn't be important, but I'm a man, bro. I cannot do anything with myself. If I see a girl, I immediately, you know, uh, pay attention to their looks. And uh, yeah, it's it's important for the first impression. But as I said, in five years, ten years, it's gonna fade away. It's it's gonna be left only what's inside will stay, and what's outside will go away. Mm -hmm. So uh, I try to pay more attention to what's inside. Mm -hmm. Right. What's in here? Right. Wow. This is the whole concept of the idea of, you know, marriage. It's still a mystery to me. It's a whole new adventure, right? I, I, it's a are whole you still new planning adventure. on getting married when you're 30? You <laughs> I never said that. You I did. never said that. You did. I mean, that, was, that was meant to be a joke, okay? Uh, for, but for now, nowadays, you mm -hmm. are put under a lot of pressure by your parents, by your mm -hmm. uh, relatives. Mm -hmm. Hey, when is the marriage? Hey, when is the marriage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's about time for me. I don't know for yeah. you, but it's for me. Now, with me, I'm married to my job, okay? So I have kids. I have a lot of them. So I got to take care of my first marriage. And now I'll think about maybe having... Uh, what about your brother? brothers, though? Uh, well, You have two little brothers, or I also came uh, to an age of when they are, you know, ready I mean, if, to marry. If, if they want to get married, then I have no objections. Okay, no one's standing in there. So way. you don't follow those stereotypes when you, your elder course, brother, if, if, it's it's not, like, if he's not married, you cannot marry? I mean, who said that? Who came up with that, honestly? Why do you, why do you even believe that? It's ridiculous, right? It, it really is, because just people have different plans and different clocks. Okay, I run on my clock, and he runs on his own clock, right? You run on a different clock. Yes. With different goals, different you know, missions. It's something that we, I think I should have decided mm -hmm. or I should have chosen someone when I was studying back in university. Mm -hmm. But when I was studying in university, those girls, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, those girls seemed so out of my league, bro. <laughs> they drove Malibu, they drove BMWs <laughs> to, the, to the study and I was I said, God damn. How do you, how? Even, how do you even afford I, those I, girls? I, 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 I was afraid to even talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Let alone, you know, talk about, you know, making uh -huh. relationships or talk, talk about love. Yeah. So working was the only option that we had. Mm -hmm. And it paid off in some ways, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you will always have re uh, regrets. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to have a chance, you know, to go back and, you know, give it a go mm -hmm. and do it until it's perfect? Everyone would. Yeah. So. All uh, right. So talk quite a lot about marriage and family life. Well, we're 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 about to. I guess yeah, we're we're almost heading to our mark. So okay. This podcast is almost two hours long. It, it, it flew away. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's what I'm getting from every you know guest I have on the podcast. They tell I'm me during a fast. very good time because you know I don't have this opportunity talking yeah. to you much. Yeah. And uh, these days, yeah. I'm very both very you know busy mm. people, and if we meet, uh, mm. we meet only like once a year or mm. twice a year. Yeah. And even if, if I want to meet with you, you mm. I have to make an appointment like oh. three, four weeks before that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like uh, like corporate people, like yes. people in the corporate world, they have yes, to set up meetings. Yes, uh, and some people who is not in this sphere, some people mm. who don't work that much, mm -hmm. they get offended. Like mm -hmm. they think that you are, you know, ignoring them. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you're just, you know, doing your best to, you know, uh, meet up with them, catch mm. up with them, but mm. you just you just can't because it's your work. Mm -hmm. It's your work, and some of your friends think that you know the, the they are being cut off, mm -hmm. they're being ignored, they get offended, and I, I kind of felt the same way at at some point with you guys, and uh, but as I worked and worked worked, uh, I came to realization that you know it's a natural thing mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, every time, you know, I get invited to go out with my friends, sometimes I get, you know, 
hit up by you, you, you ask if I want to go out and I say no. And sometimes other shit tells me, well, that's not nice. And what I tell them is usually we're going to have plenty of time to catch up when we're 60, when yes, we're 70. Yes. Yeah. That's what, you know, old ages are for when you can't yeah. physically afford to go to work every day or work 10, 12, 17 hours a day anymore. And then you, you go and you that's know, what I tell enjoy. my employees as well. When they <laughs> say they are tired, I'd say you have, you will have plenty of time to rest when you're in grave. You know? so <laughs> you're grave. You have yeah. to you have to work now, yeah. because we can work. We're healthy. We have to do our mm. best mm. to you know um, to get the best that we can from mm-hmm. the life from life. Right. In your case, it's your school. Mm. You're really uh, doing really great. Oh, and in my case, it's my it's my company as well. Yeah, and you're <laughs> also doing an amazing job, buddy. It's like no job, no. It's no joke running company of fifty people, right? It's it takes a lot of responsibility. So before we wrap up this podcast, I have another set of question, a final set of question I want to ask mm-hmm. you, and this is the part where we talk a little philosophy. So, how would you sum up your personal philosophy in few sentences? Personal philosophy. Yeah. What drives you? What do you think the point of all this? So what point of life, you mean? To you. So what, what drives you? What, what, what is, it can be just chase of money or family or fame or all those things. Possibly they are. I mean, I, I don't know. So I, I was just, chasing money mm-hmm. for the better part of my life I was chasing money mm. and I was uh, you know assessing the level of success the person have mm. the person has with the amount of money they're making mm-hmm. and if someone was making more money than me I was just crazy you know mm. I have to make more I have to make more but now uh, it's not about money it's about you know it's about for me it's about feelings it's about mm. experience uh, the chance that you can you know change someone's life that you can give opportunity for people to change their life it's about this experience Mm -hmm. when i feel this when i you know um as i told you earlier uh when i see people whom i hired and they uh, had their life changed now they can help their parents now they can help their brothers now they can finance their brothers or sisters whoever's or whoever's education. This is the most important thing. The most important thing in life for me is to give. It's to give. Give and, uh, you know, because we had this privilege of studying, learning, uh, privilege of this job, mm-hmm. pri- privilege of, you know, making this much money. But there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people who were less, uh, less fortunate. And our responsibility, I think, for for them is to give to to our best ability. And uh, I think it's important to not only give, not just give the fish, just but uh, teach how to fish. Mm-hmm. You know, if you give just uh, only this, only something, it will run out, and they will be back at their place when they started. Mm-hmm. You have to, you know, l- you have to teach. Mm-hmm. And in your case, you're teaching uh, IELTS English. In my case, I'm teaching how to make money mm-hmm. or how to, how to, you know, work. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. <clears throat> because it comes back. Yeah. I, 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 I don't have to go too far. When I when I'm always give money or give something to my mother, it, like, it comes in excess, mm-hmm. like three times, four times more. Mm-hmm. Every time it comes in excess. So... When you feel this, when you feel this feeling, when you have this experience of feeling this, uh, that something that you're doing, uh, making someone else's life better, I think this is the most important thing for me now. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's prof- that's so admirable, honestly. Yeah, that it really is. To this day, we all we all, we always thought about our own lives, uh, how mm-hmm. to make our lives better. You know, uh, chase better life, chase more money, mm-hmm. um, drive a better car. Mm-hmm. But at this point, it mm-hmm. it's all meaningless if you don't, you know, uh, give back to the community. Yeah, that's that's right. That's exactly right. 
But yes. to, to get to this point, though, you have to earn those things. Yeah, you have to work hard. You have to, I, I meant like you have to make that money, you have to get that car, you have to try those things you always dreamt of trying. And only then you realize that's yes. not the point of life. Yes. Right? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that's when you see that philosophy change, mindset change in yourself. So what's one piece of advice you'd give to 16-year-olds out there? Or if you were a 16-year-old, if you could go back to your 16-year-old self, what would you tell him? 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. It was 2017, right? Yeah. And the year we entered the university. Uh-huh. Spend more time with your parents. Mm-hmm. For me, it's a little bit specific. Mm-hmm. But yeah. For myself, it's spend more time with your parents. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, uh, the moment I started studying in Karakul, I was alone. I'm not alone, but I was living uh, separate from my family, uh, from my mother and father. And uh, now looking back, I would have spent more time with them. But for the people out there, mm-hmm. uh, 16-year-olds, people who are just you know starting, uh, starting their careers, people who are in search of themselves or trying to find out uh, what they should do in life, just try hard. Find something you are good at. Find something or find something you actually like and get good at it. If you're not good at something, if you're not best at something, there is no point in doing it at all. So if you're doing something, mm-hmm. be the best or don't do it at all. Because if you're best in something, in anything, you will be uh, successful. Even, even if you're like... Uh, a janitor. Yeah, a janitor. Yeah. Even if you, if you're best janitor, uh-huh. you know you will have you will be successful. Exactly. You can so, make actually videos of you cleaning of place, and you get three, four, five, ten million views. You can open a company, hire a bunch of people, uh, it, teach them how to yeah. you know, clean, and, uh, and be a success. And things, things like that. So, the most important thing: how much you give to this work. If you really appreciate it, if you wanna, you know, uh, if you want to do it in your future, and if you want it to bring uh, money to you, financial, if you want it to be financially beneficial, get best. Get better, 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 till you're one of the best. Because mm-hmm. you, you, you will always have, a, will, will have room to grow, but be one of those top experts, uh, at least in your city. I wouldn't say in your country, but at least in your, start from your city. Start, for, start from your class. And if you're doing something, learning something, be very good at it. Try hard, try hard, try hard. Be the best. And you will see that, you know, it will turn very good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish more people out there had this level of competitiveness, this competitive spirit, right? Yeah. Healthy competition is always, uh, you know, um, room for Mm -hmm. growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was... I came to this conclusion because you guys uh, were studying IELTS with uh, with our Domlo, mm-hmm. with Jurayev, mm-hmm. and uh, you had a lot of very good uh, students there, mm-hmm. and there was a uh, you know atmosphere where mm-hmm. you would compete with yourself. Mm-hmm. And the place I studied IELTS was not that competitive. Mm-hmm. I was the best at the time mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. That's I that's I think my first IELTS score was low. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if I studied with you guys, mm-hmm. if I had, I, if 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 I had some people who are better than me mm-hmm. when I was studying, I would be better as well. My God, this guy would have got a nine. <laughs> <The first laughs> Not nine, 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 but at least I was. I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, eight, maybe, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and one last question for today. You know what? We are right now being watched. Mm-hmm. We're we are being watched by your. 35 year old self right this podcast literally and you want to say you want to say hi to him hi 35 year old selves right and what's one message you have for your future self my future self yes Man, for, that's for, your, for your 35 year old self because he's watching you right now <clears throat> i don't know <laughs> Be appreciative of things that you have and spend more time with your family. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's it, yeah. 
Family is the most important thing. Family, family is the uh-huh. most important thing. It, it When is. I started this job, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting that uh, mm-hmm. I put my job as the mm-hmm. top one priority. Mm-hmm. And uh, I prioritize my job more than my family. Mm-hmm. And uh, for some parts, it worked re- really good for me. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, family mm-hmm. is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to always uh, look out for those who are in your family. Because family, family is the most important thing. Family is yeah. the thing that stands, will stand uh, no matter what. Mm-hmm. If you're crippled... Tomorrow, if you have a car accident, if you're cr- crippled, you will be surprised that most of your friends, most people whom, whom you know, uh, will like fade away when you lose something very, uh, very important to yourself. For example, your job, your ability to walk, your ability to talk, anything. But even in, in those uh, situations, your family will stay and support you. It's the one thing that you will never, never lose, your family. So you have to appreciate it. Yes. Totally agree. Totally agree. But can I tell you something? Sure. It, you just sounded like Vin Diesel from Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you appreciate your family yeah. that I, much, bro. Yeah. I, I admire you. I, the I way did. you support your family, the uh-huh. way you uh, help your brothers. Yeah. It's admirable. It's very admirable. Yeah. It's just doing our best, doing our job. Doing of course. These are just duties, right? Of course. Right. Wow. That's, Things we do for love. That's that's two hour podcast. It was it was, it was like just so much fun. It it felt like two minutes, exactly. Yeah. That's how it felt, right? And I honestly can't thank you enough for coming today on the podcast and sharing with us all your you know, uh, your life experiences, stories and tips, your advice for your for young people out there and your future self and just sitting there sitting here listening to you. I felt I felt a mix of excitement. I felt a mix of introspection. Made, you made me reflect on my life. You made me reflect on our past shared experiences. You made me reflect on life in general. So, yeah, it's I'm super, super grateful and appreciative of you coming today on the podcast and you know doing me this favor. So you are doing me a favor, bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, I had a really fun time with you. Really mm-hmm. good time um, sitting and talking with a mm-hmm. good old friend and the sharing my experiences, mm-hmm. sharing things that I have never shared mm-hmm. with anyone else. And for those, I know that most of your students ask for this mm-hmm. and uh, I might be launching my own program. Mm-hmm. So uh, there actually might be an opportunity for you guys to, you know, mm-hmm. To apply for the job, mm-hmm. and if you're good enough, uh, you will have bright future. Mm-hmm. So, uh, stay tuned. I hope that uh, Muhammad Ali will uh, will have my credentials, social mm-hmm. media cred- credentials, down in the comment section. Mm-hmm. So go and su- subscribe and stay tuned for mm-hmm. the announcement and stories. Absolutely, I'll have all his links in the res- description box below, guys. You can go and find him on social media and check out what this guy is up to. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Had a great time, man. Eh? Absolutely. It was awesome. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you liked our content, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit that thumbs up, and leave us your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.